Okay, so you bought a GoPro Hero 10. Well, I assume you did if you're watching this video. You all excited. You zip up in the box. And oh my god, what you see inside is juicy. The GoPro Hero 10 makes you want to take it for a spin. You're trying to vlog like Jamie O'Brien taking a swifty wave. You're so pumped up that you press the record button. But your footage looks absolutely terrible. In this video, I'll be showing you my settings on the GoPro Hero 10 to make your footage from this look something like this. Hey yo, what is up guys? My name is Clever Tam, aka the eShop Guinea Pig, and welcome to this channel. It's so good to have you guys back here. Yeah, I don't know whether this camera is focusing because I'm using the A7C for the first time, but I can kind of refer to this flip out screen, and I'm currently using 1 over 50 as the shutter speed, so I think the motion blur is on fleek, but I don't know whether the footage is exposed correctly because this is my first time using S-Log3 as my color profile, so so yeah, I'll see whether this footage is looking on point in post. But let's skip everything else. You came to this video to know about the GoPro setting, right? I got you guys, but uh, I need to find my GoPro. Let me find it first. Wait. A few moments later. I got it right here, guys. Zoom in a little bit. So let's talk about the first setting, which is to switch to 10-bit color. Go into the setting menu, and under Pro Tunes, you can see bit rate, switch standard, to high so what this does is give you a greater dynamic range so you can have more room to color grade in post so i don't know why gopro selected standard mode maybe because of the file size could be slightly larger but trust me it's worth it right, after you switch into the 10-bit color i would set the front view to the whole screen as you can see instead of just the square because sometimes you'll be vlogging multiple people and you can only see yourself but then the other person would say hey am i in focus or am i even in the frames uh, so to prevent that awkwardness just switch all over to the full frame so everybody can see themselves in the frame by the way if you don't know about this setting just hold on to this button and then you'll be in the menu system already so you don't have to click a few times in order to get in the setting currently I'm using the linear mode usually use it for vlogging if you're using it for activities underwater I would use the wide angle because generally it'll give you a wider field of view if you're just vlogging I would try to stick with linear because it will avoid the GoPro warping effect after you set everything that I just mentioned it's time to talk about lighting and also exposure but let's go get a smoothie first. there's a lot of people here so I'm gonna take off my mask. I didn't end up getting smoothie. Got a big water instead and uh, I got a bike. I need some water first. So the next setting that I would advise you guys is to use the GoPro under a sunny condition. For example right now it's a beautiful day. Yesterday it was kind of gloomy so I didn't want to take the GoPro out but then what you just saw was uh, me using the GoPro to vlog the entire footage. If you're trying to use the GoPro, just make sure to use it under a sunny condition or even outdoor environment. If you use the GoPro indoors, the footage will look something like this. As you can see, if you're indoors, the lighting will be pretty bad. And especially when you have these yellowish lights, the footage won't be as good as possible. Not to say that filming with the GoPro at night won't be ideal. If you bump up the ISO, the footage will be grainy. Now currently I'm on ISO 100 and if we bump it up to ISO 200, this is on ISO 200, it starts to get grainy but when we bump it to ISO 400, with ISO 400 the footage is way more brighter but then 
it's way more noisier. So we are on 1600 ISO and it's really grainy. It's just terrible to film at such a low light scenario. I usually use 200 for the max ISO, but I might crank it up to 600 for indoors and when it's really dark. If it's 800, 1000, the footage gets much grainier and pretty much unusable. Yeah, I'll take the bike for another spin and I'll tell you guys the next setting. It's a pretty nice view, right? Uh, I think this is Science Park in Taipo. Well, near Taipo, but then it's not in Taipo. It's kind of near university. But yeah, let's talk about EV Comp. Well, EV Comp, I don't know why is it shaking because it's kind of windy here. Typically, I would set the EV Comp around negative 0.5 because I feel like the GoPro always overexposed footages. But it really depends on your lighting situation. If it's a little bit underexposed, I'll set it to 0.5 EV. But yeah, play around with the settings and uh, we can try set it right now. So currently it's on zero EV comp. Let's try to change it to negative 0.5. This is on negative 0.5. So let's try it on 0.5 EV. All right, this is on 0.5 EV. I can't really see the front screen, but then it looks kind of overexposed in my opinion. So it really depends on your lighting situation. Now yeah, let's continue the bike ride to Taipo. shooting around 5,000 Kelvin or maybe 5,500. Currently I'm using 5,000 Kelvin. It really depends on your footage. Sometimes, as you can see, the footage is way too yellowish on my skin tone. Then you would definitely have to change your white balance. If you're a beginner shooter, then I suggest sending the auto white balance to native, which is much more accurate than auto. So make sure you don't auto everything because that will ruin the GoPro footage. I know everything is easy when it's an auto, but then you won't get the maximum quality. Come on, you spent like $3,000 on this camera. You want to make it worth it, right? So, uh, I'm back guys, <laughs> I'm back. That was a nice bike session. Now it's kind of dark outside, so I'm gonna have to turn on this light. The last two settings that I would have to mention is really important. I saved the best for last, sharpness. Sharpness, we have to turn it to low because we can add sharpness in post. But then if you lock it in sharpness in medium or high, then you can't take away sharpness. Or if you take away sharpness, it will look kind of fake. And really the last but not least is to please shoot your GoPro in a flat color profile instead of going GoPro or natural. Well, I mean, if you don't know how to color grade, then you could go for natural for a more simple workflow. But if you know how to color grade, which I will show you quickly, it will generally make your footage 10 times better. So I'll bring you guys towards the desktop in order to show you guys how to color grade as fast as possible. So here we are uh, on my desktop right now. After you imported your footage, I did some basic correction on this panel already. So this is with the effect and this is without the effect. So the footage will look something like this straight out from the GoPro. So let's play it out for a bit. As you guys can see, the lighting outdoors is significantly better than indoor. So yeah, we can start color grading it. Start going for some exposure. Let's bump it up a bit. And then we need some highlights on it. And then some shadows. Actually just fiddle around with these settings. Yeah, just some basic correction here. You can see that it's a massive difference. That is also considering that you have applied all of my settings that I just mentioned. And after you finish the basic correction, you could slap on a LUT. 
put in an adjustment layer to the top of this clip so nothing has happened because we haven't applied the LUT to the layer yet so we put we click on adjustment layer and we scroll down to creative and then we find our LUT so I got my LUT here and uh, yeah it's looking a bit too bit too yellowish as you can tell like a bit too teal I can up it the intensity down a little bit yeah this is with the LUT and this is without the LUT it's looking a little bit uh, yellowish in my opinion so I can go back to the basic correction and dial it back down dial the temperature back down to around three uh, yeah so this is the final product as you guys can see the lighting outdoors is significantly see, better than indoor so make sure if you guys use this is way better than what we start off with which is right here we started off with this but then now we add the basic correction and then finally slapped on the LUT to make the footage crispy. So that's a really quick and brief way to color grade your footage. However, you guys want a more in-depth color grading tutorial, then uh, just comment below. Just say like, oh, I want to know more about color graded, then uh, maybe I'll give you guys another tutorial on it. But if you guys YouTube color grading, there's a lot of much more in-depth education videos you guys can refer to. And yeah. With all those settings in place, your GoPro footage will look absolutely beast. Just don't set everything on auto on the GoPro. Sometimes you gotta have to manually dial in the settings in order to maximize the capability of this bad boy. If you guys like this video, please hit that subscribe button and give me a like. And also comment below. I love to hear what you guys think about the vlog or maybe the review. And uh, subscribe. Remember to subscribe because I'm trying to get 1,000 subs by the end of April. Hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys later. Peace out.